Hello guys, let's go. My name is Dalrin, and I've given assassination as thorough of a look as I can. So far, I made a guide on outlaw, I made a guide on subtlety, and I want to make a guide on assassination for the pre-patch. Uh, sorry for my matter of speech. I do have a sore on my tongue that's uh, is touching my teeth, so it is painful at all times. So I'll try to have some patience and try to pronounce, enunciate everything as best as I can. I do apologize ahead of time. So let's take a look at the assassination rogue. Which for me has been like a black sheep uh, compared to the other rogue specs. I love how they build outlaw. I love how they build subtlety. I don't really know how they feel about assassination. It has a, a whole emphasis of, oh, you give up CC, but you gain many forms of damage. And that is something I've kind of been trying to get used to as a rogue. Like, subtlety feels like a rogue with like lots of mobility. Outlaw feels like a rogue with lots of like consistent damage and range capabilities. And assassination feels like a DPS dealer, because you don't have the CC, it doesn't feel quite like a rogue. Like, I almost, sometimes I think, maybe I just shouldn't think like a rogue when playing assassination. Maybe I should think of like it as another class that deals damage and doesn't really heal. First of all, I want to clear some air. Assassination is going to be viable, it is going to be playable, because it simply deals too much damage. You only get even more damage once you get your artifact weapon. You basically, Blizzard was like, hey, do you like damage? I gave damage with your damage, so now you can damage while you damage assassination so i do want to make a pre-patch guide to help you guys play assassination in order to get used to it some of the talents some of the play styles what i do personally as assassination rogue in order to be as uh, much of a system to you guys as possible this is all for pre-patch so we don't have pvp talents or artifact weapon talents i'll go over everything as needed so let's talk about assass stats i feel like i cover stats every single time if you are stacking for any kind of damage uh stacking for a little bit mastery if you are you know trying to get some gear is probably the best option just gonna simply master deals damage but you also have not just poison based damage you also have bleeds so i'm thinking actual versatility might be the best stat for rogues altogether critical strike and versatility critical strike means every time one of your common point generating abilities crits you get an extra common point and mutilate hits with two weapon strikes at the same time so each one of those weapon strikes has a chance to generate a common point so you can get like a four common point mutilate sometimes and you'll be able to kind of offset it to make it more in your favor as assassination rogue once you unlock pvp talents so i think mastery is a good stat but you don't always deal damage with just your poison so versatility might be the way to go so you deal that so you increase damage of everything or critical strike might be the way to go i'm thinking it's going to be crit and versatility we don't really know if you'll be able to stack gear in legion once you get to max level because everybody's running around with like pre-made gear on the pvp servers and currently uh, stats are kind of locked every time you enter bg's or arenas in on pre-patch so I, I try to cover stats every time and it feels like it might not even matter but i feel like i should at least touch on it just in case class talents so what i'm rolling with is i tried a bunch of different class talents altogether and i think i found the build that i enjoy the most your bleeds did a lot of damage so i decided to go with hemorrhage you can always go master poisoner or elaborate planning elaborate planning deals 12 percent damage increase hemorrhage increases your poison for uh, bleed damage by 25 percent solid and generates one combo point and 30 energy master poisoner i tried playing around with it it doesn't seem like your poisons are the top of your damage charts when you look at recount for assassination most of your damage comes from bleeds I like your garrot and your rupture your envenoms are there your wound poisons or deadly poisons are there they're just not quite as high maybe if you like go in and fanonize an aoe a bunch of people with deadly then you might be able to see the numbers higher but on average in most cases your ruptures and garrotes are end up being higher forms of damage. This might be useful in the future because you have a lot more poison effects like artifact weapon and vendetta. But right now I'm running hemorrhage. Level 30, it's Night Stalker, subterfuge shadow focus. All of them have been slightly adjusted. Night Stalker increases your ability's damage by 50% once you vanish. I don't really like it. I used to just like bleed up a target, throw in a sanguinate, then vanish for a Night Stalker buff for 50% damage increase. Uh, I was back in the beta. That's like really gimmicky because not always you're going to be able to use vanish offensively because you have a two minute vanish. You don't really have too many ways of self sustain yourself like an outlaw or a subtlety row can. So vanish for the most part is kind of defensive or an opportunity kind of ability for me. I like subterfuge because you can take advantage of this and have two or three or more garrotes on different targets when you're trying to uh, provide multiple pressure on people. First of all, Subterfuge allows you to be a little more flexible in your opener, allows you to get a Garode, Cheap Shot, and Garode will deal 100% more damage and won't trigger a cooldown, so you can use it later. So this kind of goes into Assassin's, you should be able to maintain bleeds, so you can maintain damage on two different targets 
and be able to force pressure on at least two or more targets depending how good you are as a sass. I like the Garrod damage increase, it is really good and I like the fact that you have stealth for like a little bit so you can like cheap shot, cheap shot, cheap shot, Garrod, you have a lot more flexibility with it. Shadow focus is okay, if it was 100% less energy, uh, you know, reduction from opener, I think it would be perfect, but it's only 50, so I don't really know how I feel about that. Level 45, it's cheaper strategy versus vigor, nobody really grabs into spation. I think this one is more preference. I feel like Deeper Stratagem is really really good, it just takes a while to build up for 6 comp points and in BGs you don't always get a situation, let alone arenas. Vigor gives you a little bit more breathing room by expanding your energy, how much you have, by 50. So you have overall 170 energy off the bat. And increase your energy regeneration by 10%, which is kind of nice. I've been rolling Vigor mainly because I feel like I find it a little more reliable for me. I can apply vigor, I can use vigor a little bit better than deeper strategy. With deeper strategy, I find myself energy starved, and that's the last thing I want to feel as an assassination rogue, especially with my abilities costing like 55 energy, uh, 45 energy for your garrote. You know, there's a lot of energy investment. So I find vigor a better option because you have more energy to pull from, and your openers end up being basically full opener, where you can get your whole damage rotation in. Level 60. I basically rolled looseness. I wish Leeching Poison was better, but a lot, some of you guys did talk in a pre, uh, past video about if Leeching Poison dealt like any more than a 10% leech, it'd be really, really strong because you can dot up a bunch of targets and be basically an Affliction Warlock. Cheat Death is alright. Like, I almost feel like Cheat Death is an option for arenas, right? Because then you're spending less energy defending yourself, although you should be doing that as assassination. But if you're spending so much energy defending yourself, you never really open yourself for damage uh, onto your opponent, so I guess your death could be viable as for assassination only. Uh, I've been running this limits though, in order to have my own self-protection. Level 75, ah, uh, thuggy, like, makes me feel so bad. I think internal bleeding is the best. Uh, basically as assassination, you don't have a kidney to CC somebody. In most cases, your kidney is used on the kill target. So you have so much you know damage with bleeds hemorrhage internal bleeding for a kidney on a target trying to kill that's a lot more damage that you're pulling out on the enemy which is very very helpful and i like it a lot prey on the weak would be great if you could combo like a really easy cheap shot into a mark for death death row above like back in the day but you can't because mark for death and death row above on the same tree doesn't really work level 90 is agonized poison alacrity and exsanguinate I actually have no problem with Alacrity, it kind of just builds up on its own and maybe in like an arena situation where you just have, you know, your team, or in a BG, when you just have teammates that can cover for you whenever needed, you can just keep building up hay so it's a little bit more energy regeneration because that's what haste reads you for, increase the attack speed and energy regen, it's kind of nice overall, it's okay, I guess it's like a passive stacking, but in PvP, like passive stacks don't really get you far, it's more about making those quick second decisions, so it's a choice between agonizing poisoning and sanguinate. I'd wanted to make agonizing poison work i tried really really hard to make agonizing poison work but it doesn't work i am i'm so sad by that i am actually i'm actually very sad by that it does not work all that well it may be in three situations it can work fine but i don't like it at least for pre-patch maybe in i'm pretty sure it's much better on beta i haven't really played assassination of beta in a while it's just so bad right now i try to make it work and i have to say no the best option I feel like is Exsanguinate, it's 45 energy, uh, 45 second cooldown, costs no energy, twist your blades into target's wounds, causing bleed effects on them to bleed out 400% faster. So all your bleeds that you put up, your rupture, your internal bleeding, your garrote, using Exsanguinate, and all your bleeds speed up. Assassination works off of bleeds as every time a bleed ticks, it gives you back energy. So when you speed up all your bleeds, you get a lot of energy back, so there's something you can do with it. Plus, that's also really a big amount of your burst damage. At level 100, it's a really choice between... I could try making DFA work. They also nerfed DFA, so it like, deals 25% damage increase in PvP rather than 50% damage increase. I didn't really see Envenoms doing insane amount of damage. Like, they deal okay amount of damage. But for the most part, it's good to apply your Rupture as a bleed, because it'll deal more damage over time. Sometimes I even decide to choose Internal Bleeding over or in Venom because I have hemorrhage to increase the damage of the bleeds by 25%. So I don't really go death from above. I guess assassination does kind of lack for mobility, but it's like I kind of like from energy use and combo points sometimes. So Mar for Death is the best option because you get free five combo points and you can use them on whatever, like throwing a uh, target in a full rupture or full kidney or finishing off in Venom. Like there's so many uses for it. It's an it's just infinite amount of use. 
Venom Rush is great because it grants 3 additional energy each time it grants energy. So you get energy from bleeds and I'll talk about it in a little bit but basically Venom Rush gives you a little more energy. And Venom Rush is a good option. Morph for Death and Venom Rush are actually pretty good, both of them. As long as you're good at maintaining your dots on the enemy. And I, that one is a preference to you. I kind of prefer Mark for Death because there's too many uses for it. Alright, let's go over the changes to all of the abilities for assassination. Not covering talents or anything. We still have Crimson Vile to heal over time. And Venom still does the same thing. Eager Road is really cool. It's 45 energy, 15 second cooldown can be used out of stealth. So it's not stealth bound. Grows the enemy, causing 55k with the damage over 18 seconds. Silences the target for 3 seconds when used in stealth. So you pair it together with Subterfuge for 100% damage while in stealth, and you have a really, really strong opening target. Then throw in Hemorrhage and, uh, yeah. So Garot will be used on a kill target, the target you're trying to kill. And if you're very, very careful with your opener at the beginning, you can have Garot on two different targets. So use that for arenas and battlegrounds. You mutilates is the only way you have for building common points unless you grab Hemo. No more dispatch, but as I said, every single uh, hemorrhage, is, I mean, mutilate is uh, attacked with two, both of your weapons. So each weapon generates a common point. And if you crit, you, you get extra common points per hit. Since mutilate has two hits, if both of the hits crit, you can get four common points from the ability. So that's kind of what Blizzard did with the, with the, with the playstyle. Poison Knife is a kind of a cool ability, actually. I like it a lot. It doesn't deal that much damage. It's a 40 energy uh, cooldown, 30, uh, 40 energy use, 30, uh, 30 yard range. Throws a poison coated knife, dealing uh, 4,000 damage and applying your active lethal and non-lethal poisons. So I have crippling poison and wound poison. So you just throw it at an enemy. It applies it no matter what. It doesn't have a chance to apply it. It's a guaranteed application. So I was thinking something to use like Agonizing Poison to stack it on the enemy when I'm far away after I bled him up, but didn't quite work. Still, the uh, Poison Knife is actually a really good ability. It's a range slow that you can put on an enemy for 40 energy, a lot like what uh, uh, Outlaw Rogues have with Pistol Shot. So I actually kind of like it and you can put Wound Poison on something like a healer or something like a target that's taking damage. So you have this flexibility with your poisons, which I very like about Assass. You still have your poisons, uh, just the three of them. Rupture is a good amount of your damage. Uh, I definitely put it up uh, as soon as you can. You have Shadow Step and you have Sprint for mobility. The Shadow Step functions the same way as it does for Subtlety. And you have Sprint. Vendetta is still the same ability as before. Seal of Fate, uh, as we talked about, every ability that generates common points. If it crits, it has it generates an additional common point. Venomous Wounds that changed up, you regain 7 energy each time a uh, bleed hits a poisoned target. So you gotta have your poisons and your bleeds on target. And every time they uh, take damage from a bleed, it gives you 7 energy. So technically you can get 7 energy from your ruptures, and 7 energy from your garrotes, and 7 energy from your internal bleedings. So you play this poison uh, bleed based mechanic to get yourself energy so you can deal more damage. But, like it sounds really easy on hand, like oh just put bleeds and you get full energy. And it's like it doesn't quite work like that because your abilities cost a lot of energy. So it's like basically this is the thing that keeps you afloat without it assassination would sink so i'm happy it has there and i've been playing around with the ability of venomous wounds um just trying to find ways of like making it really really work maximize the use of it uh you sort of get there i feel like it'll be better once at level 110. so the playstyle for assassination uh with poison i like to use i tried more poisons i think having venomous po uh, wound poison on target is very much uh, very much needed very much required mainly because assassination like it has so many if you look at the talents just look at the damages you bleed deal a lot of damage and expect that was all about poisons one of your biggest hits is bleeds so you gotta apply that master and you gotta apply those poisons one way or another and i think the best way to supplement for a little bit extra damage is the wound poison especially for pvp when you whether you're in bgs or in arenas if you are facing against DPS that don't heal at all, Deadly Poison can be great. It deals a lot of damage and somewhat makes up for the healing mechanic. If you're playing against like maybe a Feral and you can put a lot of pressure on them and that you the Feral does you don't allow the Feral to get away from you to fully heal himself with like healing touches, then yeah, Deadly Poison can work. It deals a lot of damage. It's actually viable now. But for now, for P patch, I like Venomous uh, Wound Poison. It deals a lot of damage, it supplements to whatever damage you already deal with bleeds, and keeps consistent pressure on whoever you're attacking. Assassination is really about openers, really heavy about openers. You gotta know how you want to open on your target, what abilities you want to use, and I feel like assassination is more about openers than subtlety has ever been. Yeah, subtlety is like 
ha has always been like all about knowing how to open properly in a target. Now assassination is more about that. You basically would have to use all of your energy to get a good opener. You want to establish your bleeds, you want to establish damage, you want to establish control on the enemy, and you want to start additional damage on the enemy because it does take a while to start rolling. So you want to establish yourself early. So we're going to uh, talk about openers. Usually I like to open with a cheap shot, into a garrote, into a hemo, and then figure out where my combo points stand at. If my combo points are at 4, you can wait until your kidney is uh, replacing your self bar, unless you have a kidney. I usually just wait for my uh, to replace the self bar. And then mark for death into a rupture. But if you end up with 5 combo points after a cheap shot, garrote, and hemo, then you can rupture mark for death uh, kidney. Because then I, I value damage of a kidney because it gives internal bleeding. But if I can get a 5 combo point rupture or internal bleeding, I choose a rupture. So that's basically how I open most of my targets. So here we go. Cheap shot, garrote, hemo, I didn't get 4 combo points, kidney, mark for death rupture. And you basically got yourself established. So now the enemy is taking garrote damage, internal bleeding damage, rupture damage, increased damage from hemo, slows them and has less healing. So you have a lot of debuffs on the target. And every time you bleed tick, they give you energy back. Like I'm gonna just stand here and you can see my energy bar, it has hops in between. Like small little hops, but it does get hops every time a bleed ticks on the enemy. So this is one of the fun things you can do as assassination, is to get this playstyle of massive bleeds on more than one target. Since you have subterfuge, and subterfuge will not cause a cooldown for garrote, once you use in stealth, you can save the garrote to dot another target. So this is something I've been enjoying to play with as assassination. Let's say you get an opener on one target. Right? You establish yourself, garrote, and hemo, and rupture. I'm not gonna kidney here. But then you walk over to this target, uh, mutilate, hemo, rupture, garrote. Now I have two targets bled up. Both of them are taking damage from uh, garrote. And for this part, hopefully I'll be able to have a good video showing off just how much damage you deal. Just to show you realistic damage of how much damage you deal in an arena. So assassination can multi-dot, it's all really about getting the opener and getting the dots established and then from there the rotation and the playstyle is keeping up your dots. And for the most part that's really it. So you use mutilate to build, you open up, I like to open up a cheap shot to lock my target down, keep up growth, keep up hemo, keep up rupture. Then if you get kidney, try to use kidney because that's da uh, bleed damage. And then if you don't have anything else to use, you can use in venom. Oh, yeah, you can use in venom. You actually end up using a Venom not as often, at least on pre-patch. And that's what I've been doing, because bleeds simply deal so much damage. The way you would use Exsanguinate is very interesting. There's a couple of ways. Basically, you would use it to burst somebody down. Like, let's say you got a healer with a bunch of damage on him, right? So I'm going to just wait out for this training dummy. I'm going to get fresh bleeds on it and show you guys basically what I like to do with Exsanguinate. So basically, after you open her, for the most part, you are energy star. Let me show you. Cheap shot, garrote. Hemo, let's throw another Hemo, get a Kidney, Mark for Death, Rupture, Energy Starve. You Exsanguinate and you get a lot of energy, and then what you're starting to do is build up that uh, common points back up. But now your Bleeds are gone, so you can't use energy, so you reapply all your dots. So you apply dots, let them start ticking, use the energy it gives you to build up common points, and once the Bleeds are gone, reapply them again. So you dealt burst damage while reapplying all your Bleeds back up, so you can continue dealing sustained damage. It is a little bit weird when you first use it, but trust me, it makes sense down the line. Like, let me go DPS the strain dummy for a little bit, and I'll just show you just how different the damage is. Yeah, the strain dummy is gonna take a lot of damage right now, but still, it will equal a lot with all the other abilities, just how much percent of damage everything deals. Throw another Venom, let's Garrote. Uh, let's Hemo. I get, like, no energy back. Uh, Rupture, making sure that stays on. I'm just, I'm actually even trying to help in Venom here. Okay, so after doing this for a while, and I'm actually just gonna auto attack until my bleeds are gone, just to give poisons a little bit extra of an edge for the Skata. But we'll take a look at this damage spread of percentages in terms of just how much damage are you dealing to a target afterwards. Alright, so let's take a look at it. First of all, you'll see I try to use Venom a lot more often. I try to stay on the enemy, even if Rupture is taken, I try to, you know, keep attacking. So Wound Poison have more chance to proc, but you can see the spread. And just the uh, bars, the percentage bars. My rupture was 24% of my damage. My garrote was 18% of my damage. And then wound poison. And then auto attacks, then mutilates, then envenoms. So you can kind of see what the damage really comes from. And then there's internal bleedings and everything. But internal bleedings, uh, I guess, don't deal that much damage because I don't really get to keep them up that often. 
uh, unlike Road and Rupture, which I can keep up at all times. So basically, the deal with assassination, yes, you still are poison master, you still do poison damage, and your master is still all about poisons, but your damage spread is a bit different. You gotta get your ruptures up, you gotta get your garrotes up, and then wound poison off there is mainly because it has this whole effect of dealing a bit extra damage over time as you're sitting on a target, plus the healing reduction, so it's more utility, so definitely it's for PvP. So hopefully this was I was able to kind of break down and show you guys just what kind of damage you deal as assassination, why you deal the damage you deal, why you keep up rupture, why you prioritize bleeds over everything. And hopefully this makes a little bit sense for you when playing assassination. So the basic rotation, build common points with mutilate, keep up rupture, five common points, keep up hemo, keep up garrote. And when you have five common points and a kidney, use the kidney for internal bleeding. Uh, once you have all your bleeds, you can throw an exsanguinate together and uh, use the exsanguinate burst of energy to get your bleeds back up. Or to throw in a venom if you know the target is going to die of low health. And if you have nothing else to spend comp points on, you can use an venom. That's basically it. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully this was helpful and hopefully this was useful. My name is Dalren and let me know what you think about assassination. I would appreciate if you guys left a like on the video because it helps me uh, get out there. The channel has been growing very, very fast. So. I really do appreciate you guys for uh, checking out the videos and viewing them. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully this was helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Share your builds and share your insights on assassination with the pre-patch with everybody else in the comments. My name is Dower and I'll see you guys all in the next one.